Hello and welcome to Money, Money, Money. I am Sumera Abdi and today the focus is on women and their finances. How to plan specifically for certain life stages and not just that, equally important is how to navigate and negotiate your career. Joining me is Preeti Rati Gupta, founder of Lakshmi, which is India's first financial platform dedicated exclusively for women. Preeti, always a pleasure to speak with you. And you know, we were just discussing uh, before the show started about how there is a growing acceptance uh, around this issue, right? With women, a lot more women are taking charge, a lot more of them are becoming financially independent and happily so, right? Right. Uh, but an equal number uh, or perhaps more, uh, you know, for every one woman who is probably doing it, uh, managing her finances right now, there would be uh, perhaps tens or hundreds who are not yet got that opportunity. So why is it uh, particularly important for women to uh, look at their life stage and therefore plan finances accordingly? Uh, thank you, Sumera, for having me on a show. Equally a pleasure always. Uh, I particularly, one of the biggest reasons I love this show is because it's called Money, Money, Money. And I think this is something that we should encourage women to say these words very often. We shy away from saying them because of our social conditioning. Um, so it's a, always a pleasure. And I think with respect to your question, um, look, you know, uh, in Lakshmi, we've actually, you know, we have today about 100,000 plus women on the platform. And when we speak to them, we realize that the biggest uh, bottleneck for women in creating wealth or at least having financial equality um, is essentially the life stages that they go through, uh, whether it is getting married, whether it is having a child. You know, COVID told us, showed us where women had to take a back step when it came to, you know, uh, taking the onus of family responsibility. So all of these really affect um, their earning capabilities. And then, of course, there are, you know, several other parameters. For example, um, women reach their um, career peak by the age they are, by the age of 40 whereas men continue to grow in their careers by the age till they're at the age of 50 so even the ability to earn or the span to earn is far lesser when it comes to women uh, we actually did a study very interesting study uh, sumera where we spoke about uh, where we actually measured that if a man and a woman are in the same industry uh, when they begin their career at the same level, and we particularly spoke about the tech industry because we are so deeply embedded there, uh, we realized that women by the time they retired had actually one-tenth the amount of wealth uh, or they had been able to create one-tenth the amount of wealth that men were able to create. That's the sort of huge disparity, right? And therefore, women need to take into account that these life stages uh, or these, you know, uh, stages where they might have to take a back, back step or where the earning reduces, this will happen. Um, and this will, in effect, you know, um, uh, it will affect their financial security, the ability of wealth creation. For example, um, you know, you have a child, right? You take a maternity break. Have you really planned for your financial independence even during that time? Um, so there are a lot of things that women need to actually take into account when uh, planning their money journey or their financial security and wealth creation, um, which is actually very unique to women, which typically men don't have to think about. Mm. Fair enough. In fact, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, one of the important life stages, which is going on maternity leave. But, you know, now the government mandates that you get six months of uh, paid leave, right? Therefore, does a woman still need to be financially prepared to go on maternity leave? And, um, you know, I mean, how would you recommend in terms of the reintegration back after those six months? Yeah, so actually when you take a maternity break, it's not, you know, your cost actually typically increase. So first of all, you yourself, your wellness, your, you know, just your medical bills, etc., all of that increases. Uh, considering that a family may come together, you know, the, the your partner and you yourself will come together and share those expenses. However, there are certain expenses that are particularly, uh, you know, for a woman. And today's woman is 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 aspirational. So you want to get back to work, you want to upskill yourself. You know, for example, we're no longer in the times where 
you know, if you were sitting at home, there's nothing else you can do while you're bring, you know, when you're taking that maternity break. That could be very, very effectively used to upskill yourself. Uh, we live in a digital world, so upskilling by way of taking new courses, um, you know, learning whatever next that you want to, that time can be utilized. However, all of this comes at a cost. And therefore, you need to plan for that as well. Um, it's a huge opportunity, actually, for women to use that window. Um, you know, once your first two months, you've settled down to use that window to actually start, um, you know, uh, upskilling themselves, upgrading themselves. That helps for better integration also. Um, you know, while there is a lot of talk, Sumera, about really taking that six months off or eight months off, um, and, and rightly so if a woman feels very strongly about it, my personal experience and maybe you know a lot of the uh, mothers younger mothers the uh, especially the um, millennial mothers that i speak to uh, they actually enjoy the fact that if they are able to or they have the opportunity to do flexi hours uh, again if you are an online you know work from home even if you're able to work a couple of hours it just keeps you in touch with what's happening in your existing workplace so there are a lot of ways that a woman can plan this um, you know, just the financial part as well as the upskilling and, you know, going, joining the work for, workforce again. Okay. And since we're speaking about, uh, you know, mothers, uh, there is a large uh, segment of women who are single mothers. Uh, you know, financially, what are the important goals for them? And, uh, you know, I mean, what is it that they should uh, look at or plan for vis-a-vis -vis just about any, any other woman? Um, I think very, very pertinent question, um, Sumaira, and I think we are increasingly seeing a society where we see a lot more single mothers. Um, and I think one of the biggest sort of worry uh, for a mother then is the child's education. Um, you know, again, the, we today to typically to raise a child in India for an average family, the cost is about anywhere between 70 to 80 lakhs. And half of that is actually the education cost. Uh, I think the one thing a single mother would not want to do is compromise on the upbringing or the education cost of her child. And therefore, I think that becomes a big bucket of her financial plan. Uh, you know, how do you put aside money every month or um, every time that you're able to for your child's higher education? Again, within education, um, you know, it's not just higher education. We've seen today, for example, uh, even in that 50%, the 35, 40 lakhs cost that, uh, uh, you know, that is spent on a child's education. A lot of it is actually tuition fees, which begins even in early years these days. And it's, you know, you want to send your child to a private school, you want to send them to the best schools. I invariably, the whole tuition piece is something that is very, very common. How do you even plan for that? Um, and therefore, for example, in Lakshmi, we've actually created a child's education fund. What it does is it allows you to put aside money, use that because, you know, the child child education loan, um, uh, you know, business is, is really become very large because of this. Uh, so if you can use that co as a collateral to really borrow for the child's early education, uh, if needed, uh, then it just makes your cost of borrowing much lower and all the while you're not breaking your savings and you're really creating a fund uh, which can then suffice for higher education mm -hmm. uh, but it's very important for a woman to plan this and it's not just about your child it's also about your own um, you know there are certain things that you need to do as a mother for example do you have the right safety nets because you know, if the child is dependent just on you or your source of income have you created the right safety nets whether it is um, you know, an emergency fund that you've made sure you have um, taking the right insurance, which a lot of, by the way, you know, we did this survey, the uh, Lakshmi Women and Money Power Survey, where we found that almost 60% women in our country have no insurance, no health insurance and no uh, term or life insurance. A health insurance is very, very important for every woman, every person to take but a woman even more so and a single mother even more important. So having, you know, the right safety nets that are created um, and the ability to then create a financial plan, which then allows you to put your money into asset classes like equities because you already have these safety nets. Hmm. So I think that planning gets even more rigorous for a single mother. Um, and thankfully, we have all these tools today where she can efficiently use them to, you know, do this journey.
Okay. And uh, Preeti, the other, uh, you know, big goal uh, for just about anyone is retirement planning. Is it significantly different for women and men? Absolutely, Samira. Like I said, so first of all, let's look at, you know, um, uh, a little bit in terms of the, the statistics, right? Um, women typically outlive men on an average by four to five years, which means a longer retirement. Uh, like I explained before, by the time they retire, they actually tend to retire with a lesser corpus because of the money choices that they've made. Typically, women put money, all their savings into, um, you know, asset classes which are not beating inflation. And therefore, the growth of that money is, is not enough to sort of take them through the retirement. Um, so definitely, I think w women need to look at that retirement uh, planning far more aggressively and early on, as soon as they start earning their money. Unfortunately, again, as per our survey, less than 2% women are even saving. You know, I'm not even talking of investing, but even saving for their retirement. So the dependence on a partner or a parent or, you know, a, a child is very, very high. And in today's day, that is not something that you can really go by. So it is very important for a woman to start her retirement planning uh, as soon as she starts earning or as soon as she started saving some amount of money, beginning small, putting that money into, you know, whether it's doing SIPs into equity so that you're able to beat inflation, uh, as well as once again, the importance of creating these safety nets. You know, the first thing we advise women is create an emergency fund, create a, um, uh, get your insurance in place, uh, and then start building your retirement fund. Um, I mean, emergency funds and retirement fund are two very, very important financial goals that every woman should have. And unfortunately, this is somewhere that women are really lagging behind. All right, uh, Preeti, but, uh, you know, it's heartening that a lot more people are talking about it. Uh, so, uh, you know, I mean, at least uh, that conversation at least has started. A quick break. Uh, Preeti will continue to stay on with us. And uh, on the other side, we'll talk about not just, you know, how to financially plan for various life stages, but, you know, how to earn more, how to maximize your career opportunities. All of that is lined up next. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome back to Money, Money, Money. With us is Preeti Rati Gupta, who's the founder of Lakshmi, India's first financial platform dedicated exclusively for women. And we've been talking about so far, uh, you know, how it is important to plan for some of the key life stages for women and why particularly for women. Okay, now let's talk about another subject, which is, you know, careers. How do you do better? How do you progress, uh, you know, as fast as your male counterparts? And Preeti, I don't have to spell it out, but I think anybody would know about this gender pay disparity, right? The gap that exists. Uh, so, you know, I mean, for a woman, um, is it important to also negotiate salaries and promotions? How do they do it? And, you know, does it work? Uh Sumera, I think, uh, you know, the, the Gen Z is a great uh, inspiration for all of us because I think for them, there is no gender bias, even in, especially for, the, for girls and for women in their head. I think what, what we've so far seen is that women, there's huge amount of self-doubt, right? There is this, you know, terminology where we, which we use very often when we're mentoring women, which is know your worth. Uh, you should know what your counterparts uh, in the industry or within the organization uh, earn. We rarely talk about money. Uh, we will not ask these questions. We will not find out. We will not come to the table. And most importantly, I feel even before coming to the table, raise your hand to say, this: if this is an opportunity that is opening up, then I'm ready to take this on. Um, I think we sort of discount ourselves even before and we say, maybe I'll not be good enough. Maybe I will not be able to do it. So I think first of all, you know, get rid of all of that self-doubt and then come to the table. It's very important to uh, to really, um, you know, come to the table and talk about, negotiate about um, your packages, salary, um, ESOPs these days, whatever it is that, that includes or makes up your package. Um, I mean, I have a very recent example. Um, my very young son was applying for a job somewhere and they asked him, how do you justify your salary? And he said, you know, these are the four things that 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 I can use and I can tell you this is the value that I'm creating. Um, and I, the first thought in my head was that as had there been a woman, it would probably, you know, had 
she would find it very difficult to do this. So I think really laying out very logically and saying what is the value you're creating uh, or bringing to the table. Uh, so raising your hand, knowing your worth and really coming to the table to really uh, talk about it and negotiate. Okay, and you know another area uh, in the corporate life where uh, I mean I don't know, may correct me if I'm wrong. Things are changing, uh, where women get a little bit left behind is networking. Um, you know, is it a double-edged sword, and how do you go about it? Um, I don't know why it is called a double-edged sword. I think it's networking is a must. Um, uh, you know, typically in Western economies, we actually see that, you know. Um, for example, there are, you know, a lot of the countries Thursdays are meant for networking within the industry, within your organization, which we as a country, I don't think really encourage uh, organization wise, uh, where there's no differentiation between men and women. Networking is a very, very important uh, tool and it is a must for women. I think the reason we lag behind is because we multitask. There is the household responsibility. So we are, you know, at the end of the day after work, it's it's more like we're more keen to say, okay, let's go back home because there's responsibility there also. Um, I think the fact that we are multitaskers, I think managing time and really keeping time aside for networking within your industry is very important. Uh, you know, when I say know your worth, how would you even know if you're, if you're not really going out there and talking to a lot of people? Um, there's also a lot of benefit of networking in terms of upskilling, understanding what is new um, within the industry, making those connections. And I think what I've really found in the networking space, something that's very valuable is the ability to connect to mentors, uh, the ability to be a mentor to mentees. Uh, I think this is a very, very enriching part of life, which we women shy away from. So I hugely, hugely um you know uh, sort of recommend and encourage women to really go out there and make time for networking okay and uh, you know Preeti, you're an entrepreneur yourself uh, there are many others uh, who will probably be first generation entrepreneurs some of them looking at startup uh, you know funding issues uh, what is it that you'd like to tell them well i think first of all when you become an entrepreneur you leave the gender at the door uh, gen you, as a woman, you yourself need to remove that thought completely that, okay, I'm going in as a woman or I'm raising money as a woman. There will be times when on the other side, there will be questions about, you know, how will you manage? What if you get married? What when you have children? I think those questions are becoming lesser and lesser because a lot of women have really proven, um, you know, their mettle when it comes to uh, becoming an entrepreneur. Um but I do think that the entire ecosystem, and, and there is a lot happening, right? You have a lot of um, uh, funds that are allocated now for women founders. Uh, for example, Lakshmi is right now part of a Google accelerator, which is for women founders, uh, where they're shortlisted 20 um, you know, startups, which are founded by women, led by women founders. So there's a lot that's happening in the ecosystem that you should make use of. Um, I think, the most important uh, sort of piece here is that, you know, the stereotype that industries have created, whether it is you're a woman or, you know, how will you do this? Or if you're a certain age, do you have a male co-founder? Uh, the tech person needs to be a male co All of that is very fast and very quickly dissipating. Um, but when you go out as an entrepreneur, it's as much your responsibility. Um, to prove that, to come to the table for that, to assert that. And if you've got funding to really, um, you know, make them sort of really prove to your investors that there is no difference when it comes to a man or woman when, you know, once they turn entrepreneurs or run businesses. Okay, uh, Preeti, just one more question since we have a little bit of time. Any uh, practical tips besides all that we have spoken about? Any practical tips you want to leave us with for women? Absolutely. I think, I mean, this is this is something that we do day in, day out, right? And I think the first important thing that that we we tell women, especially when it comes to finance or money management, is begin by building safety nets for yourself. They are very important. We as women are, we are not risk averse, but we are very risk aware. 
I think the minute we have safety nets created, it increases our ability to take that leap, to jump higher, you know, to, to get into maybe newer asset classes, asset classes that actually give us that, you know, uh, the sort of returns that we ought to get for all our financial goals. Uh, second is discipline. One of the things that I see very often is that women do start that journey, but say you've put money into an asset class, which is very volatile, whether it is equities or gold, uh, you know, you tend to get very shaken up. So once you've decided that this is where, you know, you've, you've put your money, essentially all asset classes, for example, equities are meant to be long-term uh, investment asset classes, then just keep that discipline. If it's an SIP that has to be done, just keep that discipline of doing it. Uh, cut out all the noise around you. Markets are falling, markets are rising, all of that, right? There's a lot of noise. Um, second, uh, third, I think, women need to know that there are at least two or three goals, financial goals that they need to have control over. Um, I see in a lot of families, you know, whether it's between um, uh, a husband and wife or between, you know, a family where the daughter is earning, these decisions are completely left to the partner, right. which is fine if you found a middle path. But at least when it comes to your retirement and emergency funds, these are something that you should own um, because this is this is about your financial security. And I think fourth is just keep it simple. Um, I think there is a lot of fear around money management, taking financial decisions. Uh, there is a very, very simple way of doing it today within Lakshmi, we say even within mutual funds, you know, your equity, debt and gold mutual funds, you can make a very effective financial plan um, added by just enough insurance. So I think right. these are the typical, you know, the four very strong, um, uh, sort of practical tips that we give out and that I'm happy to share. Preeti, thank you very much for joining in. Always a pleasure. And, uh, you know, for everybody who's been watching, I hope this has been useful for you. We're going to wind up, but do stay tuned. Uh, the news continues with CNBC TV 18.